Hey guys, um, today we're on a server that I just hopped on about an hour ago, and I found this really nice town made by Destroy2K and Eco IOR. I, I don't know how to pronounce the last part of that, but yeah, they built this town without creative mode or world edit, and it is a really awesome town. So, pretty much, Destroy is going to give us a tour of the town, and so let's get started. Hey, uh, yeah, we uh, built this town. I'm not sure, even sure how long it took. We never actually took uh, took track of it. But um, what we're standing on right now is a ship that we built in the harbor um, with ebony trim and walnut basings. Uh, it's not fully finished yet, so it's not fully decorated, but most of it is functional, like uh, it's got three decks that you can actually go into. So there will be like a galley and these are the cannon ports here and crew quarters are beneath. It is a very nice ship. Including a cargo hold. This was later on in the construction. I will show you the beginnings of our construction. So the story of Seagrove was actually, which this town is called Seagrove, uh, the story was that we actually landed on an island to the east of here and we were planning on building there and we had started setting up shop and then we were looking for a place to mine. There was actually a mine underneath that town but it kind of got exhausted and we were looking for other types of materials like abyssal for the roofs of the houses. So I said, oh, well, I passed the continent, which was to, I thought, to the west from where we, so from where we sailed. Uh, so we started sailing back, and then I came across the, which eventually we'll get to, the eastern part of this island. I'm like, what is this? I never saw this before. So we ended up landing on this, this large, lush island that was actually an orchard and a pasture biome. We're like, oh, this is pretty cool. So we, we explored and we decided to move all of our stuff here. And the first thing that we started building was this tower here. This tower uh, I was on top of a hill. And I just we started laying out the tower and laying out a bit of the compound of the castle. Uh, that was our first construction. Then we slowly started building roads. Um, but as you can see here, well, down in here is the dungeon. Oh, where'd you go? Oh. Uh, just over this way. You're over here. So in here, we just, uh, you'll also notice that throughout our town, we actually have some villagers. Now, all these villagers that we found, they're actually, they were all zombie villagers that we cured with uh, golden apples and uh, zom uh, de-zombification syringes. So these people right here are recently cured zombies that we have yet to assign to the town. But uh, this is our little dungeon. Nice. I would like to comment. Um, what kind of door is this right here? This is a Thumbcraft warded door, so only the person who places it, me, can open and close it, or people I give a key to. Alright, because this is a new texture pack for me and I didn't know what door it was, and it turns out that these doors with the shaders mod actually have an algorithm inside of them that is similar to those leaves over there, and so this door wobbles just like those leaves do. It's really funny. Oh. But, yeah, I guess YouTube is probably going to enjoy a wobbling door. It looks magical. <laughs> um, and this right here is a lighthouse, obviously. Um, just built with uh, quarried brick and abyssal brick. Um, oh, and if... Uh, just hold on for a second, I got a phone. So pretty much, they built this all by hand, all by themselves, and it's a really awesome town, and this is a really tall lighthouse, so it's taking forever to get up here. Oh, I can't okay, I'm back. back. Hey, what's up? So, yeah, the lighthouse um, added the lamps up here, and uh, the clear glass. This was actually one of the earlier constructions after the castle. 
Because we planned out the harbor. Yeah. Mm. Oh wow, this is a really long staircase. <laughs> okay, there we go. And then I use anvils here as the uh, anchor points for the ship ties and stuff. Oh nice, that makes sense. This house right here was uh, the first house we built after I finished the compound of the castle. We started building houses and I was starting to build up the harbor. We built this house and uh, <clears throat> we had uh, the brick basing for this and then we started doing a, kind of a timber timber frame style housing but since we don't build with texture packs we were just using it vanilla so we didn't have access to like the uh, some texture packs have the timber frame replacing all the different colors of wood uh, wool rather uh, like uh, the John Smith textures but we were just doing it in vanilla so we used the logs and then the uh, the wool as a uh, in a form that would look like the loam and timber frame so this does look really good with this texture pack on, so it paid it paid off. It looks nice. And this right here, this anchor, is actually a sculpture that I built. It uh, at the be uh, at first I was always planning because there was this large section at the harbor, and I always was planning on having some sort of centerpiece to it. And I actually had asked other people because I'd never used the sculpture tool before for factorization, and it wasn't really well documented. So I asked other people to try doing it, but they didn't really know either. Some people tried a few things, but they gave up, so I had this, like, unfinished bit. So I said, well, okay, I'll give it a, I'll give it a shot. So I ended up uh, kind of learning on the fly and uh, just using the tools and building it and then getting a, the custom... Uh, mimicking die to get the right texture that I wanted and then I built this this anchor and placed it down and it's been the first sculpture and it's been a really nice addition and attraction ever since. So. It does look good sitting here in the middle of here. Oh and that is the boat from this side view guys. It looks really nice. Yeah that's uh, as you can see it's got furled sails right now. We were actually planning on eventually building another ship just further out in the ocean a bit with full sails. Nice. So as we come down here... Oh, well, actually, I guess I should just show this right here. This is the Welcome Center, which was the actual second building we built, but we didn't establish it as a Welcome Center until much later in the... in the... Uh, in the build. <clears throat> but this is where the spawn is, the warp for the town, actually. When people warp to this town, this is where they appear. And then this is just the little town rules and explanations that people can see. And then these are some donation chests, and if you want something, chests just that anyone can take anything from. Awesome. So as we come down here, I can show you the castle, which was, as I mentioned before, the, the one of the very first builds that we did, but was not actually fully completed until later. It's been going through many renovations. So this was the courtyard that when we first started building the roads, this was the first section of road. We were planning originally on having houses on the other side, and then it, it kind of changed to a private garden and then eventually a straight through road. But this was uh, the first bridge that we made and started planning out the roads further out into the, the town pretty early on. And as we walk up the stairs here, you can see the first section of castle, which was actually this tower, which was going to be the main tower. Uh, and then just this compound over here. This was the size of the castle before. And uh, if we just go inside here, you can see the tiled floor we built. <laughs> These doors wobble too. Yeah. Magical the doors. doors. So the very first section of the castle that we built was right here. This was actually the workshop. This is where we did all of our work with these machines to do all the mineral processing and ore processing, and tool making and everything like that. And then we early on just established a simple ME system uh, 
just with like one drive and we've slowly been adding to it but this is where we keep all of our items just on one area and yeah this was our original workshop just for our use and we this was our home base and we built everything from this location on now down here we actually established what we was always planned originally was to have free power to everyone uh, in the form of IC2 power which could then be energy bridged if they needed another sort of power so we started off with simple solars but over the time we upgraded ourselves and for most of them we were actually donated by other people who enjoy the town they donated ultimate hybrids to us so this is our town power plant mm -hmm. uh, one uh, we've also got substations around the town uh, because of the chunk distances but uh, every all the wiring is underground here it runs up through the walls to our workshop but then also goes along here and there's an IC2 uh, splitter cable there that we can shut off the power if there was an emergency or whatever oh nice does the uh, server owner offer quantum generators for donations he, uh, he I forgot what you need to do you can exchange one item for it. I, I don't remember what the item was. Oh, okay. um, but yes, quantum is technically a an option. And then right in here is our uh, little private oh, nice little garden courtyard. thing. Now, <laughs> the funny thing is, when we first built this, obviously we had to find a place for us to stick all of our stuff. So we had chests just kind of laying around here, and then we kind of built around the chests. Yeah. Um, and those chests had been there for the longest time, and it was only like several weeks back uh, that we actually got around to moving the chests and everything in them. So there was all these floating chests about. Um, <laughs> it just been there for so long because we were busy doing other things, but now it's clean, uh, open courtyard. These vines actually wobble too. Really? Yeah. Oh, like uh, blowing in the wind, like yeah. the animated. Okay. Now, the castle has been actually a fairly low priority as we build the town, so it's not really furnished. I have a few statues here and there, but as you can see, it's mostly empty. Um, yeah. This was the main tower, as we said. There used to be a fireplace here, and it was wood. But as we expanded the castle, I transformed this back to the keep tower, and then... Uh, Built all this expansion. I keep getting stuck behind doors. Yes, they're the uh, lockette doors, so they auto close. Um, so there's a few more towers here, and then this right in here is going to be the agricultural tower, which I've only got a few plants in here, but what they uh, what they end up being is this is where we put the IC2 crops, and the reason I have them under lock and key is just because. Uh, if anyone right clicks these, the game doesn't really protect them very well. So yeah, sometimes people lines. they end up breaking the plants if they right click them or click them sometimes, and then weeds grow and it ruins all the crops. So I decided to place them, but it looks like it's working now. So I guess it doesn't really matter. People can harvest without destroying the crops. Um, so this is just where we're going to keep all the IC2 related crops up in this little greenhouse tower. Nice. I'm really happy that my ladders aren't bugging out right now, because normally I do have a bug where I can't climb up ladders. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a lot of people on this server, guys. I'm guessing it's a pretty famous server. Yeah, it, it's a good server. There's a, there's a good community once you get to know the people, uh, and they... Uh... They offer a lot of the mods. There's a lot of servers that, that ban a lot of stuff. And yes, like Mistcraft and things aren't allowed, but... Uh, yeah, I don't really know of any server that actually allows Mistcraft. No, there's actually one more thing I wanted to show in the castle uh, oh, okay. before we, we go. Is the, uh, well, the second floor here is where I keep all of my... Uh, the entrance to the Mage Tower, or Wizard Tower, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's where I keep all my Thumbcraft stuff, so... We just walk up the spiral staircase here. Very long spiral staircase. I've yet to place all the, the jars and stuff, but all of the uh, alchemy and 
Thumbcraft stuff is all here. Um, jars of Essentia and the gems and my research table and stuff. So one of the things that you'll notice throughout the town is that everything's pretty cozy and that's actually the style that I like. I like small, more furnished, full, full things that are the scale for living. A lot of people build really, really large structures. I don't know if it's just to be impressive or the other thing is that the larger the structure, the more easy it is to add little details, which is true. But then the structure is so out of scale that it's just empty feeling. So yeah, that the, the trade-off that, that I like is making it, keeping it realistically scaled and then just trying to add all the details that you can within it. I keep trying to beat the staircase, but it's not working. <laughs> okay, so that's it for the castle. So as we finished the castle, we built this road out here, as I was saying earlier. That house there by the harbor was the first house we built. The second house was the welcome center, and then this is the little blacksmith shop. Uh, so we've got the out outdoor uh, work area with the the large forge and the heating fire. Burn some dandelions. And then here's our friendly blacksmith, Arganuth. Oh, an iron chest plate for ten emeralds. Now, uh, Eco earlier said that she had my golden shovel, and I don't think it was mine, because now I have three golden shovels. <laughs> well, golden shovels actually can be acquired on this server. There's scripts to acquire them, because they, uh, they're used for claiming and, and such, so... And you can see little details that we added later on. Um, there was already some water features, but then we decided to expand them and connect like the lakes and the rivers. And so this is one expansion. There's a little stream with a little culvert there that actually connects to this side by the market. Just nice. adding little, little water details and things that some people appreciate, some people don't even notice. <laughs> now, one problem I do have with this shaders mod is the grass is supposed to move, but it doesn't, and it bugs oh. me. That might actually be in the next update. And you can also see our street sign design here. Uh, lamp posts with the golden lanterns and then advanced information panels as you, the... So you actually say something on them? Oh, you can't you can't see it? No, it's invisible oh, to okay. me. Yeah, they're... Uh, all the names of the streets are on, on here with little oh, arrows. So. This is invisible street, guys? <laughs> so... As we expanded down here, there was a natural hill area, um, and there's was a natural little valley area, and, and it was roughly circular, and so I'm like, oh, this would be a good place for a market. And so we decided to make it the market, but the, these tents weren't actually added until much later. Uh, this was the first construction in the market, was this uh, clock tower here. And uh, so it was a, a large, one of the largest attractions around Seagrove for the longest time, as you can see it from almost anywhere in the town. Uh, and then eventually, like much later, I started building the actual market stalls around. So now it's a little bit more complete. It's more like a market. And then over here is the next thing that we built was this inn. And uh, it's still... We've been having some problems with the innkeeper vanishing. Uh, it's just a villager, so it's kind of a pain to make it work. But uh... so it's a little inn with a central fireplace. Have to, I've still got to add the tables. Looks like you're missing two Twilight Forest heads. Yeah, uh, haven't had the time to go hunting for them. <laughs> And upstairs is just uh, the second second floor where there'll be more tables, and then all of the uh, the rooms are up on the third and fourth floors. Oh, that's nice. Small little room where you can take. Yeah, a nap just little uh, 
little area for travelers and any patrons. And the fourth floor is just some more rooms. That is nice. What's up this way? That's just the balcony. Oh. Little overlook. I can see Eco down there. She's just like awkwardly standing there. Like, I'm not gonna <laughs> talk. I don't wanna talk on recording. <laughs> It's okay. I'm not making fun of you. Well, just a little bit. Ta-da! Now, right here is the public workshop that we established fairly early uh, in construction. Uh, and this is an area where anybody can come and use any of these machines. They're all public. Um, so you got some uncrafting tables, you got craft, craft packers, Unpackers, you've got a rock crusher here. You've got a, uh, oh, a tinker table is. for power suits. It's all powered directly from the town's power supply. You've got some factorization items here. You've got uh, MFSU for if you want charging to do. It's also the uh, battery station. Yeah, you've got your uh, blast furnaces there and your coke ovens and your tinkers no. construct smelteries. The kiln here is actually just the factorization heating blocks, but anyone who wants to make sculptures, they can place them in here and then it will bake the sculptures, it will uh, bisque them, and then they can coat it with a, uh, with a, uh, what is it called, a glaze, and then they can bake it to high fire it and complete their sculpture. Oh, very nice. And then, yeah, here's the Tinker's Contract smelteries. And then the smelt up an iron ingot. The tool stations, and you've got your. Does that actually appear up in here? Woodworker, yeah, it does actually inside. Oh, how oh, cool! If you've never used Tinker's Construct before, it's actually it's actually fairly uh, fairly neat. But a lot of the times you don't use it because all the vanilla recipes are still in there, which is. A bit of a shame. I think it would be neat if all of the metalworking would have to be smelted first. It's actually a neat process. It's really fun to take an ingot cast like this. Are you smelting an iron ingot? Yeah, I was I was mostly wondering if the ingot would show up, because I know that blocks show up, but I didn't. Yeah, it does, yeah. and then the liquid, obviously. And then it's just fun to place in the cast and then pour it into the cast and stuff, so. And you got your... Uh, Induction furnaces and uh, what are they? Um, induction smelters here. You've got your compressors, recyclers, uh, pulverizers. All the machines that people could need, they're all in here, all accessible. There's even a public mass fab. With the power that we're pumping out, you can run mass fabs constantly. Right now it's off, but without draining our power, so. I would like to see how fast this goes, though. Uh, it's only restricted to 512, so it doesn't eat all the power, but uh, nice. there's also the ability to add recycle uh, scrap and stuff. Where did this finish? Oh, it's almost there. Almost done. So, that's the public workshop. Um, upstairs is fairly empty, mainly because we don't want to have to have exposed wires and stuff, so most of it's in the basement, but there is a woodworker here which is used, um, it's actually interesting, it's not very well documented either, but if you get wood polish from the uh, the carpenter, you can actually place two different types of wood or planks, I forgot what it was, two different colors, and you can make all these different colors and shapes, which are really good for uh, flooring, uh, which I would yet say over here is an example of spruce and walnut in kind of a interesting shape, but they only come in full blocks, so it does limit your construction options if you're yeah. using slabs, but or micro so the fourth parts. floor is just empty. But I tend to build with micro parts or wait, they're uh, forge multi parts on this version huh. because red power was not updated. I forget about that, right? Now, micro blocks actually on this server, at least, they actually they're not 
banned, but they really should be because if anyone touches them once they've been placed and they, let's say you place a micro block, everything's fine, but if you actually leave the chunk and then come back and the chunk reloads, if you stand on or touch a micro block, you will crash. Uh, and then every time you relog, you're still touching it, you instantly crash. And so somebody has to come and remove it. If you pick it up, you'll crash. Your inventory gets corrupted. They still don't really know what the problem is. So... I, I know what the problem is, actually. Oh, okay. It's a ghost block. It's just a rendering bug. Um, it, it actually happens a lot. Um, it's mostly a bug between IC2 and multi-parts. Uh, okay. Like... Basically, if I was to set down an IC2 machine and then a panel next to it and the IC2 machine blew up, the entity or the tile entity dropped by the multi part, if you picked it up, it would cause a corruption in your player player dat file and mm. you would have to delete it. Or, um, actually, yeah, you would have to delete it. There's no other way except for to pretty much replace your player file. Yeah, it's. It's unfortunate because actually I was planning on using microblocks because I used them a lot in most of my builds because you can get all the details. So after we found out that unfortunate problem, which I was actually caught in a loop until I uh, I had to log in like over a hundred times because no no admin was on at the time. So I had to just every time like you get that brief second when you're touching a block to move a bit. So I was just trying to move like a millimeter millimeter every login just to get off the block and I was eventually able to do it and I kind of saved my character and we got rid of the micro blocks. So everything that we built here uh, is not using microblocks and it was it's difficult to get the detail that you want but we ended up getting it to work it does look nice here so one of the after the workshop in in we Ego always wanted to have a cathedral on the hill and because uh, it's a nice overlook and so we decided to place it up here um, so we this is the cathedral that we eventually constructed. Oh wow, this looks good. Help. What was that toast? I'm stuck. <laughs> here, I'll just TP him here. Looks like there's a villager taking a bath in your... Yeah. Um, thanks. <laughs> they like they like going into uh, the spring water here. So you can see the stained glass windows that we've added here and got the little I did come in here earlier and try to enchant something, but then I was sad cuz I couldn't open this. Yeah, the the server rules are that uh, only certain uh, donators and stuff can actually use the advanced enchantment tables, so I can't make these public. Oh. That would make sense. And then we've got our uh, cathedral grounds here with the little uh, waterway. Actually, that's actually a good point. Is Originally, the market was just a big uh, sphere, and then I thought it would be interesting to have some sort of an arch or something around the the market. So what we ended up doing is in a little bit of an aqueduct uh, aqueduct system, and so it just flows from this fountain down here, and you can see the aqueduct goes down there uh, around the market, and uh, it actually flows into the two lakes on the island, so it's actually a full circuit. Well, I will let you know that this uh, fountain right here looks absolutely amazing with the shaders mod installed. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> so as we come down here, um, you'll come to the cemetery of the cathedral here with an another uh, sculpture that I did was three different types of sculptures. The Little cross, the kind of Celtic cross, and then the standard gravestone to just add that detail to the cemetery. I'm guessing this right here was a couple. They probably died. Yeah. Horrible car accident, maybe. I don't know. There's Medieval no cars car in car accident. <laughs> you know, carriage accident. Their horses drove off the road. Nice. Unfortunately, this is not 164, so we don't have horses. But that. 
Let yes, which is us. actually, it's it's funny because I had mixed up the versions. We actually had planned down by the castle. If you saw, there was a bit of a kind of a in in the mountain. There was like a bit of a stables because we actually had thought horses were in. Uh, so we built the stables in anticipation, and then we remembered that it was actually one five two, and there wasn't a horse. So we're like, oh. So we ended up just filling it with some cows. So right over here is the mage tower, which isn't fully completed, but is going to be the area where people can buy uh, Thoundcraft stuff or perhaps have a, uh, a public Thoundcraft room. And we're going to have a larger node. Uh, there's actually a tier node right in front of this. So, And here's the little uh, the wizard's helper here, uh, Scorchy, the imp. And you can see our... our Yes, our our wonderful uh, resident mage, Perry Hotter. Oh, how clever. Now, are these purple for you? Because they're white for me. Yeah, they. Uh, these are the capacitors, and they they used to be filled, but some people have been doing Thumbcraft, so they've been draining the, okay. the Visa bit, so... I am mostly just testing out this texture pack as we walk around. I didn't know whether or not it, those updated the colors. Oh, I can actually open this guy's house. Yeah, so here's an example of someone's house. Uh, most of the houses have the same, uh, I guess you could say, theming or styling. It's the, the timber frame. We've adjusted some of the colors uh, on some of them. So you've got some of the, the, the brown and then the gray and then, of course, uh, the classic white, like a loam. So we've, we've tried to go with kind of realistic uh, colorings for the timber frame houses. I am actually taking pictures of this while we record. Because that was a really good view right here. Of this apple orchard. Yes, this uh, eco actually designs a lot of these houses. I started the main design with a few of my houses, but then when I'm busy doing, like, either laying the infrastructure for the, the town power or constructing larger builds like Eventually, we'll see the arena and, and things like that. She fills in all of the houses. Um, she's built, actually, most of the houses here, I'd say close to 80, 80 or 90% of the houses uh, were actually constructed by Eco. And she changes them up a bit, changes the pattern, um, <laughs> and spawns chickens. <laughs> Wonderful chickens. Come on, chickens. Let's go. I'm taking you, it will be Jeffrey. So oh. one of the things that we always wanted was uh, we wanted the town to kind of have crowded streets with houses closer together. It just adds to that medieval feeling, and I think it turned out pretty good. It's not super cramped, but it's actually... Um, it's pretty much perfect. Yeah, I, I just I like how it turns out, and as you can see, as you walk down the street, you can see the clock tower, and there's there's a lot of really good views that actually turned out to happen by chance we didn't we, there were some views that we actually planned some just turned out really really well and so we're really pleased with a lot of the the placements it is very nice i wish i could uh copy and save this as a schematic file but unfortunately i don't have world edit on this server <laughs> so as we go down along like here that. there's actually the uh there's a fruit grove over there where people can pick. Well, as you can see, there's apple trees scattered around the island, and everyone's free to just pick apples. So that's one of our uh, Seagrove's main exports is fresh apple. And over here, we have our little beekeeper's house. Not really fully developed. They don't have time to mess around with bees. So we just got some basic um, apiaries out here. And then uh, we've got our little beekeeper. Right here, you can see his name. Oh, it's Killington. Oh, that's a good deal. 24 oak for an apiary? What is that thing? Back in the that's uh, an analyzer. It analyzes forestry saplings and All right. bees. I couldn't figure out what it was because I can't open it. So. I'm like, an, I'm like a, it could be a, maybe a redneck controller. I didn't really know. 
this server does like to storm a lot. Yeah, um, I think it's actually caused by people with a lot of flux. They, a lot of people don't either care or know about Thumbcraft's flux, and so they end up doing a lot of this stuff or doing things carelessly and uh, creating so much flux that it just ends up storming. It tries to dissipate them. We were actually, I, some people would say we were uh, blessed with, but we we call it cursed with, a huge oil field actually right here. And there was literally like 50 spouts of it. And as, I, as you can see, I cleaned up a lot. There was actually a few people who wanted the oil, so we ended up pumping it through uh, tesseracts and stuff like that to, to their base remotely. Um, but then... They either, there was so much of it that they either didn't want it anymore or didn't need it anymore, and we don't need it because we don't use combustion engines. We just convert everything with energy bridge from our solar power. So we still got these um, really ugly oil spouts that we're slowly getting rid of uh, as we do it, but it's actually fairly time-consuming to keep the area looking good. So eventually I, uh, it will be gone. <laughs> I had my render distance down really small, so I had to turn it up to be able to see oh, those. Oh, okay. I had no clue what you were talking about for a second. Yeah. Okay. No. Leave it as uh, leave it as small. And no, it's perfect view. It's a perfect view. There's no oil out there. Okay. Grady Six Two's residence. Yeah. As you can see, all of these areas. There's a few that are available still, but all of these are actual players that taken up residence in the town, either briefly or permanently. Um, it's open to everyone, there's no, no cost or anything, it's just, we like to build and share this stuff, so. One second. Oh, if you can't press T if you have your chat shown, or chat off, one second. I have to close Skype, because I'm getting tired of messages. Ta-da! Alright, we're back. Sorry guys, I have Overwolf, so things t tend to pop up on my Minecraft screen. Extreme Guide 27's residence. Nice. So just to give an example, as you can see, if I just tear up a bit of the road here, uh, you can see that we have underground cabling running under to the streets. Oh, I do. So we can actually just run it to everyone's house where they've either got an ME system or they're running a furnace or something. And yeah. uh, we just hook them up with their power, and they're good to I, go. On uh, my that last... way, we can stop people from putting like solar panels on the roof and tearing up the roof, and just keeping it more of a medieval theme. Like, yes, they didn't have electricity in medieval times, but since this is feed the beast, and you've got these machines, and so we can run it underground, and it doesn't become an eyesore or uh, clashing. This does look very nice here, guys. Yeah, this was actually fairly, I mean, apple trees dominated this island. So we ended up taking some of the trees down, obviously, to build, and there were some open areas. So we just added other trees that we've collected throughout the world. Like, there's some willows there, you got some cherry blossom trees, you got some spruce, and you got some pine, eucalyptus. Eco showed me a, a battle arena earlier. Should we go check that oh, out? Oh yeah, we're going to get over to that. Uh, we'll swing by right after we look through the country here, the farms. Originally, I was toying around with the idea of having a town wall around the city, yeah. um, but we, as we built stuff, and then there was not much space, and then the wall was probably being imposing, and Eco didn't really think that it would be a good idea, and it decided to grow on me that it also wasn't a good idea, so we ended up not having a, a town wall, and it's just kind of open into the country here. So you, you can see our... Else plentiful barley fields here that this whole area was just gold and covered with barley um, and so this was a perfect place to start putting farms and ranches with this version of shaders the barley doesn't move but I'm fairly positive that in the updated version that's supposed to be coming out pretty soon the barley will be actually added into the config to be able to move like grass or leaves do oh that's cool so I'm really excited for that 
So one of the first structures that we built in the country was that house over there, which is actually um, the player that lives there helps out a lot. Um, does a lot of uh, resource gathering that we need. Like at one point we needed lots of dirt and lots of cobble and he just goes and gets it all for us. So he's always willing to help. And then the next structure was this this windmill that uh, that I constructed here. Yeah, I did. I checked this out earlier. This looked really cool. Looks really good at a distance, and uh, I just thought it would be good on the hill, and Ooh, it just it frames it really well. Can't see in there. You got any torches? I do. There we go. I can see now. Uh, with the shaders mod installed, if you're in the dark, it's almost impossible to see. Oh. <laughs> Haven't done too much in it. I wanted to build like a second floor. Not sure about it. There is a grind grindstone here, so it's. But um, obviously, it's not functional in this. This isn't better than wolves. But uh, I'm, I'm ha happy in how it turned out. It looks looks really good, and it really fits yeah. in uh, this countryside. Now, Toast, isn't there a mod in, I'm pretty, it might not be in this pack, but it was in Direwolf 147 that you could actually build a windmill type thing and it would actually spin? No, that was Red Power. Oh. Yeah, Red Power had, it was in the ultimate pack. It has the windmill. That's and of course, better than Wolves. But... Yeah, it is unfortunate because it would look really good, but I'm happy in how this one turned out. Yeah. So as we come over here, we'll see one of the substations, as you can, I don't know, you said your render, render distance is a bit low, but the castle's way off in the distance there, and it's actually too far. So people out here, um, if I wasn't online or equal wasn't online and that chunk wasn't loaded, they wouldn't be getting any power if you were to run it out. So over here is one of the power substations that uh, I see is like, just another... I don't know, I'm seeing like a smoke off in the distance over here. Oh yeah, that's uh, it's another little house. Oh, it is. Okay. Little farmhouse on the the uh, edge of the island there. So we do have another power substation, and that will give power to the uh, the country out here, so they don't have interrupted power. Oh. I think I might have accidentally just ate rotten flesh. Oh well. Thought I ate raw chicken. Uh, unfortunately, it's getting nighttime. I hate that. Yes. Well, actually, this is this is probably a good time to start crossing the bridge. You can see it at night. Yeah. So you can see the uh, the town in the distance has all the the smoker blocks from Railcraft. It's the chimneys and looks really good. So as we started filling up this island, um, we were starting to run out of places to construct more homes. <laughs> Eco thought it was a good idea to said, "Oh, you know, we should expand. We should have there's a little there's a little island to the to the south of this island. We should like build a bridge across and uh, you know expand there." I'm like, "Okay, that's cool." And she's like, "I'll I'll expand the the island a little bit bigger too, so we actually have a little bit more uh, something substantial to build on." And so, I logged in, uh, like, the day after that, and with with help of other people... Oh, yeah, okay, she, she says that it started with five blocks, um, so it was a very small little teeny island. And so, I logged in the other day, uh, the next day, and she had, with the help of a few other people, but mainly her, she had built this enormous, very natural-looking island, so... Um, we'll see it in a, a few seconds, but yeah, this is the uh, main bridge that we've got connecting the two main islands of Seagrove. Oh, I'm not on fire. I thought I was gonna die from stepping in the fire. So this island right here that we're standing on is completely manufactured. Completely. There um, was just ocean here. I don't have a sword. <laughs> Toast has my sword. And I must say, like I was in when when she first showed it to me, it looked like it was a uh, world gen. It looked like it was created. It was very 
Very well done. It, um, it is pretty nicely done. And this is still, we're still in the construction phase of this and filling in the, the bottom and stuff. So we've got a few houses on here, but as you can see, it's mainly still empty. But I think this, this is the one house the... that I was looking at earlier. Yeah, this is it. I'm pretty sure. It's a nice, nice gigantic fireplace here. And... Very nice houses. Yeah, we like, uh, we just like the smaller, it's more cozy, more livable scale rather than enormous, uh, gigantic empty houses. And we think it, it really fits, fits really well. And, uh, when you have, when you have it filled out with either furnishings or machines and it, it just feels more complete than just like big empty corridors to get from one machine to the other. And that's kind of the style that we've been going with. And we think it's turned out really well. So as we come over here, uh, this is actually the arena that I just, just the other day actually finished completely. Um, and uh, you can see the view of the castle over here. But this arena was taking up a lot of my time as I was constructing it. Uh, it it's fully wired and there's control room and stuff. Um, so yeah, there's the arena when you come in, there's... Toast, may I borrow my sword again? Oh, there it is. So you can see a nice view. Actually, I'll go to the staff room here. I know Eco uh, had me fight a couple creepers earlier. Oh. <laughs> well, it was skeletons, zombies, and creepers, but the creepers are what kept killing me. Let's see, do I have... I can't really place down a crafting table. Can... No. Hey, um... Eco, would you mind coming and placing down this crafting table and making toast a sword with these diamonds I have. Hello. Well, she, she's on her way. She went to get uh, something from the castle. chat off, so if you send me a teleport request, I won't be able to see it. Oh, there you are. Oops, I accidentally threw out two crafting tables. Thanks. Oh. Oh, you made him a sword already. Cool. Uh, just tell me which team door you're in, and then I will uh, I am open in the gate for you. Yellow, orange. Yellow. I'm in, okay. I'm in red. Okay, Eko's just gonna give you some uh, set up some opponents for you. I'm assuming you have the slash spawn mob command because every time I fought one of them, they all had golden boots on. Yeah, they. Uh, that's one of the things that we have uh, we have a higher rank on the server now and we get access to the spawn room command. On my server Which is useful for the arena. Yeah. I think on my server you have to be emerald rank to get that, which is uh, thirty dollars I think. It's like our second to best rank. Most of our ranks are really cheap on our server. Compared to most servers where you go online it's like a six hundred dollar rank and like nobody's gonna pay that. Then again, okay, so I'll just open do. up the team gates for you. So if Eat My Toast wants to get to his uh, starting position. Oh. I'm ready. So I'm going to 
gates for you. So now this is actually going to be a PvP uh, arena as well, so like we could have four teams all fighting each other. But uh, I'll just randomly open one of the gates for you, but which one will it be? Two different types of skeletons? Huh. Oh, creepers. Gonna die. Ow. Wow, that's a lot of zombies. It's actually quite fun to, to spectate in the arena as well and watch people fight. Oh no, I hate skeletons. Skeletons are my least favorite out of all the mobs. Because of the ranged attack? Yeah. They like fight each other too. There you go! Hey Toast, I got a chest plate for you. My boots. Found a spoils bag. Yeah, me too. You are victorious. Ta -da. I thought I found a book, but then I realized it's just the Tinker's Construct book. I went through yellow, so I'm gonna go back through yellow. Did you find steel boots or iron boots? Steel. Okay, I was gonna meet you out at the entrance. So as you can see, a lot of our builds, like this arena, you can see all of the stone that was needed for it, and since we don't have creative, I had to go out and get all of this stone, either by mining or, you know, you can use the Ow. the igneous extruder. What was that? It's a wisp, I'll just kill him for you. Oh. Scared the heck out of me. Kelly's gone. So yeah, it, it's hard to... It's hard to construct Did you just shoot things him with when you don't have creative, but it's very rewarding when you finish something like this, and then you can say, hey look, I didn't spawn any of this stuff. You know, I went out and got, I mined, I created, um, and like as you can see some of these decorative blocks here, they're added by Tinker's Construct, and so you have to use a chisel and chisel these blocks. So a lot of these areas, all the little details that that you go in and just like, oh, this would look good, this would look good. And I mean, it takes time, but it's very rewarding when you have uh, completed it. I have a question. I have a question too. What, what yep. block is this? Oh, those are those are advanced information panels. Huh. Uh, they're an add-on to IC2's nuclear control, and they uh, they let you adjust the. You can like here if I just if I just open it here. I didn't know they fit in corners like that. Where did I? Oh. See, I can adjust. I can adjust the depth. I can adjust the curve, the angle of all of them. So it lets you put in diagonal signs and and things like that. Really cool. I have a question too, actually, but I'll hold my question to the end. And Love. I think I'm. We've still got more to build. Like we're gonna have a magic kind of school slash university thing off in the the end of the island. I'm also and, really uh, hoping that our that. voices are being recorded right now because sometimes Fraps decides not to record voices. Oh. <laughs> that would be really, I would be really angry if it wasn't. But then again, I can always go in and voice over it. Oh, that's true. <laughs> If I have so to. I mean, the rest of the island is fairly, and there's a few houses. There's uh, actually, oh, there's um, this tree right here is a tree that Eco built, uh, 
by hand. It's a nice center point. So I'm probably going to end up putting history. this video up on YouTube, but it'll probably take about two days to upload it because Fraps decides to record in very large storage. Right. So pretty much this video is probably going to end up being about 20, maybe 30 gigabytes. Oh, jeez. Yeah. But it's, a lot of editing. It's going <laughs> to be compressing. a really good quality. Like a perfect Christmas tree. Yeah, see, that's one. something that we could do is is perhaps add little, you know, pieces of wool or, or whatever and just decorate it for certain holidays. Yeah, like, um, they have the colored wool and... Yeah. Uh, there was uh, something else. Little micro blocks fit on it. Wool. Well, I'd love to do micro blocks if they weren't so oh, yeah, they're really dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> about that maybe yeah uh, like i don't know they have a lot of different kinds of cool things yeah. Get unleashed yeah we can trouble. look around and perhaps do things like that just for fun little now I, I have <laughs> uh, another question how do you pronounce her name because like the, i know the first part but the last part i don't oh, know oh just eco ior ior all right thought it was like your fancy like oh yes and this has been uh we've dubbed it the, the water slide because uh <laughs> you can just uh kind of oh, coast down it it's almost daytime guys i'm starting to get that really fancy glare on my screen Ooh. oh i got stuck well, these are all still water. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was getting pushed. You are in this area. But then it just goes down to this still. Oh, what a beautiful sunrise. Now, I still have no clue where I'm going because I don't have my map. So I don't know if I'm walking back a way that we already came. Well, we can head back to the bridge. Actually, we can end right as the sun's going up. We can end where we actually landed on the main island and uh, founded this great land. Beautiful town. So this is going to be a little bit more filled out as we uh, build more homes on it, but it's going to be more forested area. The other town was, as you can see, the other island was more more clustered, more developed. This was going to be more spaced out homes, more forest, um, with like the main keys, like the arena, and then there's actually going to be a bit of an underground oasis type thing and magic school thing in the the far south there. I thought I just accidentally break place string on the floor. Oh, what is that thing? Oh, that's in Baby Enderman. Ender Todd. <laughs> that scared me. It looked cute for a second. Oh. Yeah, this texture pack is definitely pretty cool. Hey, which one were you using again? Uh, Sortex for Feed the Beast 152. Every time I step in the fire, if I step out, it I'm just not on fire anymore. Hmm. Let me test this again. Yeah. I didn't didn't seem to work with eat my toes. Nope. I'll just walk into it. Do you have a special type of oh there you go. <laughs> oh. I'll survive. <laughs> I do love water. This is a great picture right here, so I'm gonna take a picture of this. Now this is with my horrible CPU, and I'm gonna be getting a, CP a better CPU hopefully soon. I'm gonna be able to oh, yeah, do videos much better. Here you can see the arch bit of the castle con connecting the Ooh. the uh, agricultural tower to the main Smile. castle. Toast, turn around, smile. Uh, gotcha. 
You look awesome with the sunglasses and the armor too. <laughs> <laughs> so just over here, I guess to uh, to finish off, I think we've covered everything else. Um, over in this direction is where we landed. Obviously, none of these houses were here at the time. This uh, texture pack I'm using kind of gives your house like a really old um, medieval time or a kind of like a Nordic look to it. Well, that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. I, I don't know what, what these are right here, but it looks really cool. Like maybe stone. Oh, this, these are actually dried dirt blocks. And oh. what they ended up looking like is they looked like older cobble. And it was very, very fitting for farm houses, which since this is the uh, kind of the country outside of the town, this is what we were going for. And it ended up looking really good. Yeah, it looks exactly like how you describe it. It looks like old cobble. It looks really cool. Oh, uh, ME system. From the yeah, back. so you can see he doesn't have any power because we've run it from underground. So nobody has their own power production. It's all given to them for free. And uh, we can just hook up machines and. See, I have a. Set up. I have an interesting problem with. Uh, wait, what's this part right What's this block right here? I think that's a, that's a high voltage cable. Oh. I don't know why he's got a chunk of it here, but... Um, I think it's because these trap... Tra um, I'm pretty sure high voltage cable can transfer energy farther, but I'm not sure. It can transfer It can transfer uh, extreme voltage, while the uh, glass fiber can only transfer 512. Oh. I think what he was doing was he was ramping up his power to extreme so he could give it to his mass fabs to do massive bursts of production. Or something like that, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> but I see he took it out, maybe they exploded. <laughs> I have a problem with uh, people, they donate and they get quantum generators on my server, but they turn it up way too high and they blow up all their stuff, and then they're like, hey, can you replace my stuff? No, you oh, should yeah. have probably read the warning on the item when you purchased it. But I end so up replacing Right over stuff. here is where we landed, actually, and we've yet to... We're going to build a little, like, memorial thing, uh, commemorating where we landed. But uh, we sailed over from the east over there. There's actually a little island over there. And we sailed back over here, and we saw all these, these cliffs over there just filled with barley. We're like, what is that? What is that in the distance? And <sighs> it ended up being barley, this. and we just we came across this really lush island, and we just decided to settle there instead. And I was expecting to be able to play something all the way out here. You guys have this nice oh no! Claim. This this entire area, including a lot of the ocean beyond, is all our claim that we've been uh, we've been given donated claim blocks, and just through playing, you, you generate claim blocks, and we just got the whole place locked down. Please. Oh, I have no idea what the average time. Yeah. Um, I would. What I really wish that we had done, and I I never even thought about it. Uh, I should do it next time. Next time we do another build, is to do before and after shots, um, and uh, just to keep a, like a track of how long it took to do certain things. Because it mother. would have been really great to just see like where the castle was, where this original place was, what it looked like before, and then now what it looks like. Um, it, I'm, I should have really taken shots, and I, I wish I did, but. Uh, I'm really oh. liking how it turned out. It just looks very, really good and and meshed. Well, this has been a very nice tour, guys. I'm very happy you showed me around. Uh, quick question, though, before we decide to wrap up the video. What would we have to do to get you guys to come build something awesome like this on our server? Uh, I don't know. Because uh, <laughs> on our server, we could give you creative mode, and you could build whatever you felt like. Well, that's true. Um, just, we just have to find the time, I guess. Just take some time that we'd usually be on here and go to your server, I guess. All right. Um, are you guys experienced with World Edit? Uh, I've not used it myself, but I can pick it up pretty quickly. Okay, well... We do have uh, admins on this, well, and 
two ad two admins on the server who are permitted to use it, and they are pretty good at it. Um, so if you guys ever just decided to get on and try to build, then they could definitely help you out. Yeah. And uh, okay, toast it'll be used for copy pasting, definitely. <laughs> yeah. But most of our houses, it, like it depends on what style you're going for. If you want a medieval style or whatever, then a lot of the houses might be slightly different. In which case, I don't know how much we copy paste, but. Uh... Well, pretty much what we were hoping for was maybe we're trying to set up a because on our server we have my town instead of grief prevention, so we try to get as much players in one place as possible, and right. It, you can there you can then fit more players online. So we're trying to make a uh, like an admin town or a town for new players to come in and join, get resources if they need it. Pretty much like what you guys have here. Right. Yeah. Uh, I kind of built a little bit, but I'm not as creative as you guys. <laughs> yeah. This is why, like, I mean, a lot of people when they're playing. Minecraft or Feed the Beast, they, you know, they go out and they make giant factories, which end up lagging the server, but they make tons and tons of stuff, but that's not really what we're, we like doing. We're, we like creative, we like building, we like, you know, making these things and making it look nice, and that's what we're about, so this is definitely what we like doing. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for having me here today, um, and eat my toast. Um, that's cute. And, uh, this will be put up on YouTube probably in a long time because of the size of the video. But thank you guys, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you later. It's been our pleasure. Thanks. Bye.